Hello Bloggineers, today we're going to show you the Museums of San Jose and our first stop is the Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum, which literally translates to Rose Cross. This is the largest Egyptian museum in the western United States. First, we're going to look at the Afterlife Gallery. Here's the coffin of King Tut, and he gave his life for tourism. Oh, look! There's a photograph of an entrance to an Egyptian tomb. This is interesting because I guess when they have shorter coffins, instead of laying the person flat, like in a standing position, they fold up their legs. Apparently they also mummified animals because here's a mummified bull head. Bull head, They're like cow moo. Imagine if cow moo was mummified. Also there's a cat. What is this? A gazelle. This is one of the most well-preserved mummies because they use a type of salt to dehydrate the body so that the water cannot rot the flesh. And they also put a whole bunch of perfume on it, which is why the whole body's skin is black. But the perfume also helps preserve the body. And lastly, they wrapped it in clothes. Back then in Egypt, half of the kids died before they reached five years old. And this girl was four and a half years old when she died from illness and they mummified her. And not many kids were mummified because it was expensive to do so. So this child mummy is pretty rare. Now we're going to enter the tomb. Uh, my name is Robert. We got Izzy over here. He's going to help us as well. Mr. Robert is teaching us how to read the hieroglyphs. Look at the lines. See how we have horizontal lines here? We read that horizontally. Here we've got vertical lines, therefore you read that vertically. What you want to do is look at which direction the characters are facing. So find, find the animals, find the birds, find the people, find the snakes. Figure out which direction they're facing. So you notice everything here facing towards the right, which means in this particular case, we read it right to left. You read into the faces of the characters. All right, head inside now. Uh, follow us and make sure you watch your step. Grounds a little bit uneven. Over on this wall, we have kind of a backup plan. We've got a movable tablet seated in front of the great face. On the table, we've got loaves of bread over here. Uh, we've got wine, beer, different kinds of meat. The Egyptians thought that things that you carve, things that you create artistically, they can actually become real in the afterlife. They have a definite effect. So since Kamumul death is shown in front of a giant feast, he gets to eat that feast every single day in the afterlife. This is a really cool experience because it feels like we went deep inside an Egyptian tomb, even though we're just in a building. Now, the pictures here kind of tell something of a story. So over here, this is a scene of daily life. So the Egyptians thought that in the afterlife, you still have to do everything that you do now. That includes eating, sleeping, breathing, drinking, working, everything. Kumumotep, when he was alive, was a nomarch. A nomarch is an Egyptian governor. So he was in charge of a lot of people. So he thought, you know, I was a nomarch in life. I'm probably going to be a nomarch when I'm dead. So he's seen here overseeing all of his workers taking care of the lands. And every single person you see is going to become real and do exactly what you see them doing. So that way, Kumumotep is going to make sure that all of the day's work gets completed. 
We exited the tomb and now we're in the daily life gallery. These funny jars with faces are called best jars. And I think best was an Egyptian god. So when children were sick, they were fed milk in the best jars in the hopes that the milk would turn into medicine. But of course that didn't happen. So oftentimes the children just remained sick. These may look like funny googly eyes, but they're actually used for mummies because the person's real eyes are dried out when they're mummified, so then they get replaced with these false eyes. This display shows some- ow, I bit my tongue. This display shows beauty products for women, I think. And there are two things that stand out here, which are both for their eyes. So number 13, the green powder is made of copper ore and it would put it as eyeliner. And number 12, the black powder is a type of lead. So it might be like toxic, but it put it on their eye. <laughs> this is a statue of the god Happy, H-A-P-I. And he was the god of the Nile. So he's associated with papyrus, which I think is like what they use for paper. He's also associated with the river not flooding and also women having babies. Until the new kingdom of Egypt, horses were not introduced. So during the old kingdom and middle kingdom, they used cows instead for farming. This statue with no arms is Neef, which was the warrior goddess. And she doesn't have arms. Yeah. Books were not printed until the Gutenberg printing press, but this ancient Egypt was 5,000 years ago. So in this model, the scribes are writing the books by hand. That must have taken a lot of work. And that's the Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum. Brother, what was your favorite part? My favorite part was um, <clears throat> maybe the tomb. Yeah, I also really liked the tomb where it was like you went underground. And I also really enjoyed the rest of the exhibits because there were many cool artifacts and information that we learned about ancient Egypt. It's also nice that there were guided tours for the Egyptian too. Stay tuned for the next video where we visit the downtown museums of San Jose.